everyone. I'm Katie. And I'm Jill. And we're from Ecamm. And we are really excited to be recording this video for the OBSPOT team to talk through how we are using literally all of the all, all of them <laughs> and it's really really good timing actually because we here in our studio have been rebuilding all of the different yeah. spaces so we have not one not two but three different spaces that we can record from and yep. this that we're in right now is our newest space which is our casual podcasting podcasting, space. podcasting spot yeah it's phenomenal it is phenomenal. And so the camera that we're using right now for this recording is the Obspot Tail 2, but we have the ability to switch back and forth between the Tail 2 and a couple of different Tail Airs and another Tail 2, which is in our other recording space. And then we have a behind the scenes camera that is a meat. Yes. I think the only ones that we're not using right now are the tinies, but we could probably find places to add those in. We could. There is a place for every type of OPSOC camera. We were talking before we hit record, which is totally always what we do here at Ecamm, <laughs> but uh, about how easy these cameras make things. Yeah. And I, I will say we've been slowly switching out all of our cameras for the OPSOC cameras, not only because the company is great and the cameras are awesome, but because it's really easy from a flexibility standpoint. Right. Uh, it, you know, other cameras, you would have to physically get up from this space yeah. in order to be able to do things like zoom in and out. Katie cam, Katie Hello. cam, Katie cam, Katie cam. Pan control kind of a lot of the different camera settings. Whereas yeah. with the OpSpot cameras, we can do that literally with a push of the button in the actual software without actually having to get up and move. Yeah. Which is phenomenal because... I mean, we need to be able to, if we just zoom in through different softwares, we're going to lose some of that quality. What these cameras, because they can zoom in themselves, that quality is going to stay super crisp, which you're going to see in some of our footage that we're integrating. So yeah, having being able to take one camera and have it multifunction in a whole bunch of different ways and angles and you know highlight what you want to highlight is, is phenomenal, especially when you're doing the producing yourself. And a lot of our users mm -hmm. are doing the production so they don't have they don't have a whole team of people that are adjusting the lighting and the cameras and the props and everything else it's a one person show oftentimes so we need yeah. to be able to work with um with equipment that's going to be flexible to meet those needs yeah the cool thing too i think is that as you're saying if it's a one man band it, it you don't have to memorize an entire book of camera settings like also the true. reality is is that you know a lot of the the camera equipment does require, you know, a, a high level of knowledge. And so the yeah. cool thing about these cameras is that no matter whether you're using, you know, from the meat all the way up to the tail too, they have so many automated settings and features. So yeah. you can literally just be like, click face and, you know, <laughs> and it's going to be able to do all of the white balance and all of the, you know, um, all the different settings to make sure that it has your best possible picture quality or, you can turn all of that off and then do all of those settings yourself right. if you, you do have that skill set. So if it, you want to. Yeah. yeah. So it leaves it leaves no man, woman behind. That's right. And that's very <laughs> important. The tail two that we're recording on right now, we've connected that to this computer through NDI, which has been really helpful. But there's lots of different ways to have these cameras communicate with your devices. And that's been super helpful. And you can even use them completely remotely, which is also really cool. Yeah. I think, again, the ability to control them in a variety of different ways, even if you're trapped in a space or in a different space is really cool. Yeah. Um, specifically for, you know, for podcasting or for doing live shows where it's difficult to have to pop up and go and mess with a camera. 100%. This is our original Ecamm studio space and we've changed this space probably four or five times over the last few years. We really wanted a space and a place where we could record videos, live streams, podcasting that felt really Ecamm specific and Ecamm centric. Uh, so there's a lot of like old Mac uh, and Apple products in the background. We wanted our Ecamm fam sign. Um, we've had bookcases and various things, but it, it traditionally has been a single camera shot. Um, and we switched recently from using a Sony mirrorless camera to the tail two. And the reason that we did that was because it gave us a bunch of flexibility in being able to actually control the camera from our computer using either Ecamm or the Obspot Center app or a combination of both. We were able to actually do things like uh, if our customers had questions during a live stream or during uh, the live recording of one of our podcasts, we'd be able to actually 
you know, zoom in and out or pan and show the other parts of our office space. Because as you can see, the space is actually pretty big uh, and we record a ton of different kinds of video here. Uh, and there's all different uh, ways that we do that. And so as we were updating and thinking about this main space that you just saw where we were recording, we were like, oh man, it, you know, we have this sofa, we spend a lot of time on it and we do a lot of podcasts and podcasting. And we wanted like a more casual, like real space to record from. And so the success that we had with the tail two, we wanted to bring into this new podcasting space that again gave us a, a comfier, more like down to earth feel. And so we have the tail two as the main camera here again, because this allows us to leverage all the way up to 4k quality and we can connect it a variety of ways. So right now we're using um, this camera as in its NDI format. Uh, so we're able to, you know, to, use it that way, but we could certainly connect it a variety of other ways as well. We're trying to limit as I'm sure it's no surprise. It gets really easy to have cables and wires all over the place. And we do still use this space as an office as well. So we don't want to be tripping over everything. So it's nice that we have a bunch of flexibility. These cameras, regardless of whether or not you're using the meat all the way up to the tail too, are not only affordable, but they're small and they don't they don't need a ton of uh, space and a ton of. Um, in some cases, you can use them wirelessly. The you know the the larger ones also have batteries built into them, so just a bunch of flexibility and being able to make these kinds of changes, move things around, toss them in our bags if we need to bring them with us on any kind of business trips or uh, shows or productions that we're doing on the road. So it's. There are a lot of benefits in being able to use the same brand across the board in the studio space. And again, I think the biggest selling feature for us, particularly with the Tail 2, is that it's not just a stationary camera. We can sit um, in these spaces with our laptops and be able to steer these cameras around, pan and tilt, zoom in, uh, switch over to one of the other cameras to show all the different spaces and places that we want to record from and all the people that are involved in the production. So it gives us a lot of ways to be able to use our software better, which is great for us because we're constantly creating videos. <laughs> 